Hi, it's Jill here, um, coming to you to talk about children's literature and faith as we explore how we can use children's literature in ministry. With it being Children's Book Week this week, and the theme is Curious Creatures, Wild Minds, I thought that it, it just showed um, that God has made us to be curious creatures uh, with wild minds. We like to ask questions, we like to learn and grow, um, we use our imagination, which I think are all um, things given to us by God as we're made in God's image. And I also think the uh, Curious Creatures Wild Minds obviously fits with um, with children's books as well because they often contain uh, curious creatures. The characters in the books are curious creatures with wild minds and, and interesting ideas that we can explore together. And so I think you can uh, use children's literature to explore a, wide, explore a wide range of topics which can be useful in our ministry. In this session we're going to share our favourite books, um, we're also going to maybe play a little bit of a game, I'm going to share one of my other favourite books and then we're um, and exploring how we can, um, yeah what this might mean for ministry and then also exploring some ideas for using children's literature in ministry. So let's get started. So one of my favourite books at the moment or one of the, of the playgroup and mops kids that I uh, work with, one of their favourite books at the moment is Handers Surprise and it's about a girl, um, Hander, who, made, who puts together a delicious basket of fruit for her friend Akeo and she walks to the next village or wherever to give her friend this basket of fruit. And along the way, some curious things happen. There's not many words in this book, but the fruit keeps disappearing. If you look at the pictures, different animals keep taking the fruit. Um, and there's not many words, as I said, it just says all oh, red, ripe mango, but you can see an elephant taking the mango. And it goes on, and at the end, you're looking at the pictures going, there's no fruit left, what's going to happen? But there is something that happens if you look closely at the pictures, and it's okay. Handa does have a gift to give to a KO. You'll have to read the book to find out more. Um, the book will I'll put all the books that I use in this session on my on the resource list that will be available with this video. And um, so, yeah, so I really love this book and kids love it because they can see what's happening. The words aren't saying it, but they can see in the pictures what is happening. And um, yeah, they can, and they just love it. And especially once they know what's happening, they'll go through and name all the animals as it goes on and things. Um, but I just don't think it's a, a, it can teach us stuff too. So this book, you know, we might plan things, but things don't go always go as we planned, but they do turn out okay in the end. And I think God is with us in those plans. So you're gonna get the opportunity now to share your favorite book with someone. If you've got someone with you, you can share your books um, now and think about um, what you can learn from the book and how it relates to God. If you don't have someone with you, then that's okay. You, you can have a time, you can pause the video if you like and have a time of re reflection um, based on the book, The Gift of Wonder. And it, so you could look at the, the illustrations in the favorite book that you've picked out and look at the, examine this and read the story out aloud, uh, like you would if you were reading to a child or if you were being read to. Read the story out aloud, look at the um, illustrations, watch for your inner response, and write down anything that you sense God is saying to you. So if you like, pause the video now and do either sharing with others or reflecting by yourself. I hope uh, you've been able to share your favorite book and what it means to you and what you might learn from it. So Sue also shared her favourite book by Mim Fox called Wilfred Gordon MacDonald Partridge. And it's about a little boy who lives beside a retirement village and he hears about a lady who has lost her memory so he decides to help her find it. And Sue says, I love this book because it raises a significant issue that affects many older people, the loss of memory. The way Gordon tries to find things that might help Nancy remember is really special. I think people of all ages can identify with this story. And you'll hear more about Wilfred Gordon MacDonald's Partridge when I share some ideas uh, l later on in this session. Now, I have one of my very favourite books with me, Not a Box. Now, this book um, 
is a book that I've only had in recent years, but I've used it um, when I was doing relief teaching with uh, pri um, lots of preps and grade one classes or even grade two classes. And there again, not many words in this book. And it's the pictures that were really tell the story and the kids trying to guess what's gonna happen next. But other things I like about this book, it has um, the weight on it, net weight, just like you would on a box, has a, on a product or a box, it has a net weight, which books don't normally have on it. So they the book is called Not a Box and they've kind of created the book like a box, the brown sort of box um, paper. And um, on the back, it also says this side up, just like you might have on a box as well. And in this book, uh, I can't, I'm not gonna read the whole book because I don't think you can read whole books and, um, Legally read whole books on a recording that is going to be available for the others to see sort of thing. I think it's okay. It's been tricky to what re researching. There has been um, some publishers have give, given permission, particularly during COVID, to um, that it's okay to live stream with a book if the book, if it's not being recorded sort of thing, if it's not, the recording's not being kept or if the recording's just being shared in a uh, closed private group. Uh, it still has to be, the recording still has to be destroyed after a certain time. You can read whole books for educational purposes. So yeah, probably explore that a little further if you're gonna use um, books online in any way. So today I would love to share the whole book with you, but I'm not going to, just gonna share parts of it. So the book is called Not A Box. And you can think, and it starts by asking, why are you sitting in a box? And then if I was reading it, I would ask people to um, to guess what the box could be. Because the book's called Not A Box, so he's, but he's sitting in a box. And then when you turn the page, it just simply says it's not a box. But you can see that he's imagining he's sitting in a car. And it goes on and asks why you on top of the box and, and different things, um, why you're squirting the box. And then... Um, it says, and then there's one, a page, are you still standing around in that box? And then ask, again, would ask the people you're reading it to, why are you standing around? Uh, what, if it's, what could it be if he's standing around in the box? And you've got lots of answers. And then when you turn the page, you can actually see that it could be many things. But he says, it's not, 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 not a box. But it, it, there's pictures there of being uh, a pirate in a, on a, up on the tower in a pirate ship or floating in a hot air balloon or uh, riding on an elephant or in a boat. So different things. And then the book goes on and asks, well, what is it then? And then he thinks for a while and then he gives an answer, which I'm not going to give away. You'll have to um, find the book to do that. But what I would like to you to think about now and probably pause the video again and if you're with others, um, talk with them, or uh, if you're by yourself, maybe write down some things. So what do you think we can learn about all ages doing life together from this book? I know I haven't read the whole thing, so it may be a bit harder. What can we learn from this book about doing uh, worship or ministry differently? So if you'd like to pause now and do that. Um, I'm sure you've come up with some fantastic ideas, but some of my ideas were from this book, that this book is very much about imagination. And I think um, God has gifted us with imagination and we can use imagination in lots of ways in worship and ministry to do things just slightly different, um, which makes it often more memorable for people and of all ages too. Um, and that things are not always as we seem, like he kept, like the, the, the person speaking the book is keeps asking why are you sitting in the box why are you standing in the box etc and he's saying it's not a box and so things are not always as we as as they seem and we may need to ask people uh, what they are experiencing or seeing we think they might be experiencing one thing it may be another we may need to ask and we may need to listen to what they're saying um, less is more sometimes sometimes we try to fit everything into a worship service or a program but maybe allowing room for the wonder and the questioning and um, yeah, less leaving some room for wonder and leaving room for people to explore faith on their own a bit too. And also I think very much um, children, as an early childhood teacher, children can learn through play and through story. So um, 
yeah, using their imagination and trying things out and acting and seeing what it's like to be a pirate on a pirate ship or different things. You could, um, yeah, act out uh, dramas, act out different things, act out Bible stories in church and all sorts of different ways that people can play and explore their faith. And the, um, the book that I shared the, the individual reflection from for the storybook, The Gift of Wonder, has lots of more ways that you can play and explore uh, around faith. We're now going to look at um, some of the ideas that we can, of how we can use uh, children's literature in ministry. Um, I'll explain a few of the ideas um, and more details and links will be in the information resource sheet that you can uh, download. Um, if you have others with you, you may like to reflect on these questions to start with before I share my ideas. So children, if you've got children with you, how do your teachers use books to teach you in school? Or you can answer the question, have you used or seen children's books being used in worship or other church programs or events? Uh, you could pause now and discuss these questions or think about these questions before I share my ideas. Okay, so let's uh, share some ideas. Now, before I do that, some of the ideas um, that I'm sharing have been taken from uh, the Using Children's Literature in Children's Ministry PRC webinar. PRC is Practical Resources for Churches. They do a lot of webinars for churches um, that yeah anyone can watch. Um, they are recorded so you can go back and see this one and um, also um, more recently I've found a Virginia Theological Seminary webinar on, on YouTube and so both of these uh, webinars share practical ideas as well as more on the why and how to choose uh, children's literature when you're using it in ministry. Um, and two uh, resource sites, websites that are useful for finding books that match particular themes or um, Bible readings are uh, Picture Book Theology and Story Path Lectionary Links. Now onto the ideas. So in worship, the, the most obvious idea is using um, picture books or in uh, the children's message. Um, obviously, not just the children gain out of this, adults do as well. Um, but you can also use children's books in other parts of the worship or as to explore, um, as the basis to explore a particular theme through the whole of worship. You might start with the book or have the book as part of exploring that theme. And this book, Worship is for Everyone, is a, um, which includes ideas for worship, including storybooks, is a way of exploring faith at all ages. And it has some service outline ideas for all sorts of different services from uh, like Christmas, Easter, Confirmation, uh, the Body of Christ, Evangelism, Education and God's Love. So and they're just, there's other topics as well. And we have used um, the book Wilfred Gordon MacDonald Partridge in um, for an education service for our back to school service and where we had we used the book and then had some discussion around it and then also had other activities to explore the theme learning is for all around the um uh one corinthian one corinthians uh the 12 reading the body chapter how we're all part of the body and we're all needed sort of thing and so we had activities that related to the book and are related to the bible reading and related to the theme around that activities you could use um yeah books as part of the sermon or as a, a way to open up discussion instead of having a sermon um we used tina the tree in our a um in a back to school service this year and so read this book and then there was options that people could do and discussion or reflection by themselves on it and so tina the tree is based on psalm one andrew mcdonough the lost sheep series he writes lots of books that are biblical based um, but they are children's literature or you could use a book to go with the reading such as um, 
the Luke reading at Christmas time, the nativity written by, uh, illustrated by Julie Vivas, using the words from Luke, um, has lots of great pictures that could go with the reading. So you could use it as the Bible reading, use the book as the Bible reading, or you could you you'd have a Bible reading and use another book along the same theme as the Bible reading to go with the reading. Or you can use picture books um, as part of the prayer, and I'll give an example of that later on. Other ideas for events and programs outside of worship, so social events or other programs outside of worship, maybe educational events. The Bag It Up outreach, where families or children, uh, you gather children or families together, discuss or have a devotion or something around a particular biblical theme, and then send a book home um, that children can children can choose on from depending on their age. So uh, one, like a picture book for younger children under school age, a maybe a, an easier chapter book for primary school kids and a, a, a longer book for high school age sort of thing, but all related to that theme that you've been talking about. Um, bedtime stories and prayer. This could be a standalone um, in-person or online event or as part of another um, social event. We've had uh, times where we've had uh, family dinners or all age dinners for all ages and we've then used a book and a prayer at the end of the event, uh, a book and a discussion and a prayer at the end of the event, sort of modeling the practice for at home as well. Um, and some uh, there's some churches that do this kind of once a week online on Facebook Live. Obviously they don't keep the recordings then um, to do that. A read aloud time before or after Sunday school or church or other church events, sort of, yeah, just a, a casual time where people can stay around if they want to and hear some stories being read, which would relate to maybe the themes of the day or whatever. Um, someone else suggested a reading group for prim primary schoolers. So reading a book and lining it up with scripture or what your church is learning about. And I think they were using a, a Harry Potter book um, and it was to do with Paul and the journey of Paul, I think, that they were lining it up with. But yeah, that's just an idea and you might have, might springboard some other ideas. You could use it in uh, books in parenting sessions or workshops uh, with adults. Um, uh, Love, Love You Forever and the Copper Tin Cup are two books that I now have and were, I first experienced on a church camp where all ages were together and the speaker was using uh, children's literature in many of the sessions and um, love you forever I've often used in a in parenting workshops when I'm talking about um, raising great kids or bringing kids up in the faith that you want and using it with um, the love languages our five loving love languages and my son's love language is uh, words of affirmation and so I use, often use that book, um, Lobby Forever, to finish off the parenting session and usually cry myself and end up with tears. Um, if it's seasons of the church year, you could use um, uh, the person who did the Using Children's Literature in Children's Ministry also has a webinar there about celebrate a Holy Lent and Easter through children's literature. And in, in that it's, it's talking about using the symbols of Easter or the spiritual dis disciplines that we often talk around around Lent and Easter and matching these with a children's book. You can uh, watch the webinar to find out more. Um, we've used Armin's Adventure as a family. It's a, a family story for Easter. So you can use it for the whole of Lent, uh, read it slowly up to Easter. There's a number of chapters and it leads up to Easter, the, um, the death and resurrection of Jesus. Um, so yeah, set in, in the time of Jesus. So that's a, uh, a great family book to read. And also we've used at a church, um, like a church dinner, as I said before, a church social event at the end of the evening, used The Giving Tree, which was um, is a great book. And using it as the tree is very giving, but then talking about what does that, how does that remind you of God or how is the tree like God? We've, um, or a book a day for Advent, a lot of, um, there's a number of places where you can find a book a day for Advent or ideas of reading 24 different Christmas books um, for Advent and some of those could be um, uh, Christian or some more secular ones. Um, 
Arnold Dutrio has written a series of books. Jotham's Journey is, I think, the first one. Um, we use these books from when my son was four to when my daughter was about 18. Every year we use one of these books for um, Advent. And it's a chapter a night during Advent. And the characters, there's kids, it's the characters that sort of get lost and end up um, along the way they meet each other. So if you read one book and then you find the characters in the other books and it leads up to the birth of Jesus. They all end up at the birth of Jesus. Um, some of them are related, related to Jesus. So you, yeah, it's a great great book, books to read for all ages. So that's a great family thing, which you could yeah, gift to families. Um, and also you can think about adding children's literature or to add into what you're already doing. So we used to read um, Twas the Night Before Christmas and An Aussie Night Before Christmas uh, on Christmas Eve with our kids. And then I found this book, uh, Twas the Evening of Christmas. And it's actually the yep biblical story again. And so that was added to our tradition as well. So these three stories were read on Christmas Eve before our kids went to bed. Um, so that is mostly my ideas. If you have any other ideas, um, yeah, please feel free to share them because others might like to use them as well. Um, if you'd like to learn more about any of the ideas I've shared or anything else, please contact me on intergen at mrpres.org.au. I'm also happy to lead workshops in your church on this or other topics related to intergenerational ministry or faith at home ministry. Um, such as grandparenting, grandparents and faith, uh, faith at home with either just with parents or faith at home with whole families. I've led a workshop with the kids and the parents in together. Uh, being an intergenerational church or how you can support households with faith at home. So I hope you found, found something valuable in this uh, session and I'm just going to finish with a prayer as I said. I, I, once again I can't read the whole book life um, but I would probably I was doing this um, in live in person would read the whole read the book or maybe have one person reading and the prayer being um, as the books being read so one person reading the book and one person sort of saying the prayer but I'm just going to do it slightly differently today so so the book here is called life by Cynthia Ryland and the illustrations by Brend Brendan Wenzel beautiful illustrations so thank you Lord for life, for the life we have beneath the sun and the moon. Thank you that we grow and change. Lord, we can ask any animal on earth, what do you love about life? And they would give us answers. The hawk will say sky, the camel will say sand, and other animals would say other things. What would you say that you uh, what do you love about life? Thank God for that now sil and silently. But we know, Lord, that life is not always easy. There will probably be a stretch of wilderness now and then. Some people may be experiencing that now. Pray for those you know who are experiencing a stretch of wilderness. Lord, we thank you that you always show us the road to take out of the wilderness or through the wilderness. And Lord, we thank you that we can trust you and look at the animals of the field and see how you care, see how you care for the animals in nature and that you care for us too and what we can learn from the animals. And Lord, we know that it is worth waking up in the morning to see what might happen. Lord, we thank you for life and we thank you that life, through life, we grow. Amen. So thank you for watching.